There's a couple of ways you could be saving up your time and resources before the 1.5 update arrives, and these are the three most important considerations. A lot of people are getting excited with the newly upcoming housing feature 1.5 update, and even though we only saw a few tidbits of information during the livestream, there's actually more than enough to know what's in store for us and how you could prepare from some of the things we discovered. And probably the easiest way to do this would be to remain conservative with all of the materials we have gathered so far, because we simply don't know what the actual ingredients will be for the crafting, even if some of the information has been shared outside of the livestream, like the fact we will be able to cut down trees in the world and then use the wood for many of the furnishings, but aside from this, Mihoyo will either introduce more new materials we haven't seen into the game, like the wood we'll now be able to collect, or instead, the existing materials will become part of the crafting system. In fact, there's a sneaky way you could possibly be burning up a lot of your materials without even considering, and that would be the parametric transformer, which can store up to 150 different items, and even though most of us have been using it as the dumping grounds for things like mint, berries, or iron chunks, in exchange for some of the more sought-after materials, like talent books and experience cards, maybe now would be the time to become more aware of what you're actually putting into the Transformer, unless of course you have no problem running around and exploring the world for some of these common items, but for a lot of us, time is of a limited resource and doing mundane activities in order to stock up on materials that could potentially become crafting ingredients for housing system can be a cautionary approach to saving our time. Now the reason why you won't even consider saving up the materials would be the sneak peek we saw from the stream, that there's going to be a coin shop with a reset timer that features features things like resin you can buy from there, and as explained during the livestream, you get these coins by placing furniture, and if we don't know what exact materials we need, we could be delaying ourselves from these coin shop rewards once it goes live, and instead spend our time hunting for these crafting materials when we could be building the furniture. And from the footage we saw, it's already clear that ore will be part of a crafting system, which kind of makes sense, but then there's new things like the piece of fabric or some kind of bottles that not only can be seen as part of the required materials, but there's also a tab that's in a very similar fashion to the bottle itself, which would mean before we even craft the items, we might have to create or transmute the new materials from the pre-existing ones. Basically, if you decide to use the parametric transformer or any other activities like cooking and blacksmithing, keep in mind that some of these materials could become a necessity for the housing system, and it's better not to spend all of it before the update arrives, since even if we can run around and collect it in the world, it's still going to take a lot of time to do this, so it's better to be safe than sorry before the update arrives. Lives. Whenever a new update is about to arrive, it's always useful to take a look at what new things will be in store for us, since some of the revealed information can actually help us save up on the precious resin that we all need and want for our artifact and ascension material farming. And this time around, we have two things to keep an eye out for, one of them being the permanent addition to weekly boss resin cost, which is going to be cut in half up to three times per week, and you can actually already save up up to 90 resin by simply not doing the bosses on the week when the update is about to drop, since after the patch goes goes live, the quality of life improvement will also become mass available to everyone. So in other words, there is a small window of timing, which is basically going to be Monday and Tuesday, during the week when the 1.5 update is about to drop, when you could still fight the weekly bosses and end up paying the full resin cost for them, when you could just wait instead for the update to arrive and then take advantage of the reduced resin costs. It's not much, but roughly 100 resin to save up by remaining patient can be a nice thing to have in the long run. Speaking of which, if you're the type who likes to wait until something becomes cheaper or more valuable per action taken, then the overflowing mastery event could be a nice thing to prepare for. And this is basically what we already have seen in previous update, where the ley lane rewards got doubled for the 20 resin you spend up to 3 times per day, which is basically going to be the same for talent domains. And while experience and more are more valuable in the long run because of their wide application, you could spend your resin elsewhere and wait until this double reward event arrives for talent books, even if it's going to be only 3 times per day. Of course, preparing for such an occasion isn't going to be the most reliable way of saving up resin since we don't know exactly when this event will go live, but for some players, talent improvement past level 6 gets quite expensive, not just material-wise but also resin-wise, so maybe waiting until the special event arrives can be a good idea for some who have an idea where to spend their resin elsewhere. Either way, these are the two most awesome things to look out for once the update arrives, and hopefully, you can save up on some of that precious resin for those mediocre artifacts all of us keep getting. Also, if you want to get more preparation tips like these, make sure to follow us on Twitter, link in the description. 
Free stuff is always exciting, especially when we're talking about Genshin Impact. And one of the things that got teased during the live stream was the Energy Amplifier event that's not only going to award us with a lot of useful and crucial materials like Crown of Insight, but we're also going to be getting a free Diona after completing the event. And this is actually a pretty insane reward for a lot of reasons, one of which involves the fact Diona is an extremely good support character. And for those of you who are always on the lookout, which next character to build, this could be the answer for you. But the biggest reason why this is even more exciting than usual would be the addition of a new domain that's coming with the update and coincidentally, one of the artifact sets will be a good fit for Diona's support build. And you don't even need to obtain decent substats for these artifact pieces since it's all about the actual set and what it provides, which is going to be the 4 piece set and the attack buff it will activate for the team, which isn't going to be the most reliable thing out there since you can only get 3 seconds of this buff after using her elemental skill, but even then, the 2 piece bonus of extra 20% health is a very good thing to have on her since both her skill and burst skill with this particular stat. In fact, it's possible you'll only want to get the two piece artifact set for her and then mix it together with another one like Retracing Belight for chunkier shields or Maiden's Beloved for better burst healing. And in the situation when you already have Diona but still haven't built her, getting a free constellation for her can actually be a major improvement, especially for some constellations like the last one where she gives a massive 200 elemental mastery boost for teammates who have their health above. 50% and standing inside her burst radius so you can produce those amazing damage numbers from melt and vaporize reactions. Either way, no matter how many constellations you have, Diona is an amazing support for those who need a cryo element in their team and also love the idea of having a mixture of healing and shields provided as support. So in essence, if you're still on defense, which next support character you want to build, waiting until Diona arrives as a free reward for completing the energy amplifier event can be a great strategy, especially if you still haven't built her even if you already own her, so getting that extra constellation could be a nice motivation to do it. Unless of course it's the fourth constellation, which even to this day remains the most puzzling thing about her. But to quickly summarize, the upcoming housing feature is still shrouded in a lot of mystery and even though not much time is left until the major update arrives, exercising caution with all the materials we own and saving them up could be a great way to prepare for this new feature, especially now that we have seen there's going to be a coin system that's based on the amount of furniture we have and these coins can be used to purchase resin and other useful stuff that's all behind a reset timer as we have seen from the stream. Then there's the weekly boss resin cost reduction we'll be getting, so on the actual week when the update drops, don't go out and fight bosses until these new changes come into effect so you can actually save up up to 90 resin from this activity and on the same note, if you don't want to raise the expensive talent levels now, you can wait until the overflowing mastery event arrives for the double drop rewards. Finally, if you're looking to build a good support character, Diona is going to be a free reward from the Energy Amplifier event so you can wait up until this event arrives and then use the opportunity to create a strong team member for yourself, not to mention there's also going to be the new artifact set that you can use together with her. The newest 1.5 update is going to be massive with so many new activities and events on the horizon, so it's always a good idea to gather up all the information MiHoYo has shared with us and use it to our advantage to prepare ourselves before the update arrives. And while we still don't know a lot of things, even the smallest tidbits of information can help us save up resin and our time as well. But if you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to the channel by clicking the bell notification on and then don't forget to gently press the like button. Also, you can get more Genshin content by following us on Twitter, link in the description. Thanks for checking out the video and see you soon.